What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and I can't stress that enough and the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you're who maybe need to the game and just need a little bit of advice. Or for those you're either who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. And I literally have been waiting to use this team for so long. If you are looking for a fun career mode team that's not a major European side, that needs a lot of work that needs a major rebuild, that has reasonable objectives in Season 1, but an absolute ton of cash. I don't think there's anyone better in the top five European leagues than these guys. You might know who they are. Hertha Berlin of the Bundesliga, and I cannot wait for this. Now, this side only just avoided the drop zone in the Bundesliga last season. They won a relegation playoff over Hamburg to remain in the top tier of German football. But my goodness, this team needs a lot of work doing to it, because despite the astronomical transfer budget of around £65 million, pounds it's not got that much quality it's not got that much young talent but it's got three lovely kits i absolutely love the alternate kit it's got one of the best stadiums in the game and i stand by that statement it's the olympia stadion it's an iconic old ground it's in the game it's fabulous it's a strong rivalry with uh, Union Berlin, who this year had an amazing season in the Bundesliga, finishing in a Europa League place. It is an amazing team to do a FIFA career mode because in the first season, I'm just going to be honest here, they're in a bit of a mess. I mean, they've got several players with their deals that come the end of the year. They've got very little what you call star power here and not much young talent. It needs a lot of change. In fact, I would go as far as saying in the Bundesliga, it's the side that needs to rebuild and the biggest rebuild out of all of the 18 teams in it. Now, there's only one player out of the several that I give a new contract to. That's Nicholas Stark. Um, with uh, Hertha Berlin, you'll notice their defense isn't the strongest. I would give him a new contract. He's in his mid-70s overall and his mid-20s as well. Not going to get much better, but he'll be a solid third slash fourth choice and a half for you. And in season one, I'm going to be totally honest here, man. I'll get the ball rolling straight away. Yep, I would rebuild this team and do a hard rebuild in Season 1. Literally just sell all of those Deadwood players, all of those squad players, eating up your wage build. It don't justify those salaries. All those players in their 30s who aren't very good. Yep, I, I, would, I would just sell them all. Forget about giving them time to prove themselves. No, this Hertha Berlin team needs a major, major rebuild. Get to work straight away and change this team's identity. Um, so we were going to sell Belfordil to Man Manchester City, uh, Davy Selker was going to go to West Ham, and also Derdick Boyata, uh, Dedrick Boyata, sorry, uh, the Belgium. 30 years old, 76 rated, solid, solid defender, but again, this Hertha Berlin side's got to get younger, it's got to get better, it's time for a major rebuild. Uh, we were going to sell him to Julian Lepotigu Sevilla for £6 million and let him go to Spain. Yeah, in season one with Hertha Berlin, there's, there's, no, there's no time to be sentimental. Just sell these players, man. They're eating into your wage bill. They've not got as much quality as you need to take the next step with Hertha Berlin cash in on these guys right now. We saw Boyata the 6 mil to Sevilla. Davy Selka went to West Ham for just under £2 million. And again, they just don't have the quality for what you want to do in the future. Clint's are going to Besiktas for one and three quarter mil, for example. These guys are squad players in season one, could do the job. But ultimately, you got to get better. you got to get younger. Hertha Berlin should not be, with the cash Dave Kaur, a team that right now are scrapping for survival in the Bundesliga. This is a team that needs to be targeting European football in two or three years. So, yeah, it's time for a major rebuild. So after selling those players there, with Hertha Berlin, with all the money we've got here, you know, around 70 mil uh, in the first transfer budget in season one, where would I splash that massive amount of cash? I'd say a new back line. Yep, Hertha Berlin, they have a couple of decent players going forward, such as Jovetic, for example, up top. 
it's not too bad, but the defense definitely needs a major, major improvement. Now they've got Bakarik, who's been there for over a decade at right back, but really he's not got much first team quality and he's in his 30s as well. You definitely need a long term successor at right back and this guy is the best option you can get. It's Masraoui of Ajax, 23 years old, 82 overall. So he's under a decade, sorry, over a decade younger than Bakarik and he's also around 10 ratings higher as well. I would get this guy on a defensive wide back development plan ASAP to train up his low defensive work rate to high and again being 11 years younger right now and better in every single department. Yeah, definitely bring this guy in. You can get him for just under his valuation, around £30 million, and it will be an absolute steal, all things considered. Um, I'd also recommend a new centre-back here with her to Berlin as well. Now, you've got a couple of decent players that are currently out on loan right now, such as Jordan Tarana Riga as well. But you probably want someone with really solid first-team quality in Season 1, and this guy's been linked to some bigger European sides, and understandably so. He led his Freiburg teams to DFB Pokal final last season. He's a really good great young defender in this game. It is Nico Schlotterback, 21 years old, 80 overall. And you can get this guy for slightly over the valuation, but let me tell you, this guy would be a big, big, big step up on the centre-backs you've already got here. And again, at just 21 years old, he's so young, but he's already so mature for his age with brilliant defensive stats. Not a big fan of the high attacking work rate on a CB, I'll be totally honest, but if you can cope with that, there's very little downside to this guy. He's not what you call too slow, and you can improve his pace pretty quickly. He's got good strength already. He's tall. He's got great what you call base defensive stats, such as the tackling and defensive awareness stat as well. And he'll be able to go straight in to your first 11. Yeah, he's a really, really solid young centre-half to bring in here. And being German is a nice feel as well. Uh, so he also recalled a couple of players that are currently out on loan as well. One of those young wingers there, Piatek, who's on loan at Fiorentina right now at 75 overall as well. What I would personally do is actually drop Jovetic, by the way, to CAM in this team. You've got Kevin prince Boateng. Um, um, one of the sort of what you call like legends of the game, if you will, in the past 15 years or so. But you're going to want to sell him in season one. And I would personally drop Jovetic to CAM. Uh, Jovetic has always been an incredibly great creative player. And as an out and out striker, I've always felt, even during his time back at Manchester City, it was always better playing slightly deeper in a system where being an out-and-out -out striker is something he can do, and that is his natural starting position. But to me, I've always thought Jovic would be better in a CF slash CAM role, and that's what I'd do. I'd recall Piatek from Fiorentina at 75 rated, have him as your first choice striker, and drop Jovic to the CF slash CAM role. So following the signings and recalling some players out on loan there, we also decided to sell quite a few more players here. Like you would have seen the transfer list earlier, this Hertha Berlin team has so much dead wood. It's unbelievable. I mean, there are so many players so you've you've just got to sell you've just got their salaries off the books and even if you can't get much for them for example with Picaric going to Montpellier Platten Hart to Getafe and also Korber going to Mischtieland for 1.3 mil it's, it's not a lot of money getting raised for just free players here I mean really it's I think it's less than 5 million to be honest so not much money coming in for these free players same with uh, Rene Yarstein here 74 rated we're only accepting an £870,000 bid for the guy but again it's not about how much money you can get it's about how much money you save on not paying their salaries week after week anymore. Yarstein, for example, is 34 years old. He's only going to get worse. You might as well just cash in on season one. We sell Platin Arts Getafe for £3 million as well. And with the money we raised there and the money we had left over after our first two signings, I would recommend a new strike with her to Berlin, but also a versatile player who, if you want, you can play somewhere else. There's none better, really, if you're looking for a German option here and doing a Bundesliga career mode than this guy right now. He's made a name for himself out in Austria. It is Karim Adeyemi of RB Salzburg. You can get this guy for slightly over the valuation. He's valued at 11.5 mil. I think in the end I spent 14 mil to get him, so it's a it's a little bit over the valuation, but not by much. And he's a he's a really solid young striker. I mean, he starts off 75 overall. He's 19 years old, and he's got 87 potential as well. Yeah, this Hertha Berlin side does not have many players like that with really solid potential, but 
Schlotterback, Masrauli, and now this guy here, Adeyemi as well, they'll all have that. In the first season, Hertha Berlin have a ridiculous amount of depth, which they don't need, because you've only got 34 league games a season, you've only got one cup competition in the DFB Pokal, and you're not playing in Europe. So in the first season, the, the fixed squad that Hertha Berlin have is, I, I would say, more detrimental than good, because you're paying players wages, which they don't really justify, because they'll barely play. <laughs> and of course, you know, with very little little, um, little um, fixture congestion, it's very rare you'll have either an injury crisis or lots of players getting fatigued. And with Karim Adeyemi as well, like I mentioned a moment ago, this guy, get there, this guy can either play up top as a natural striker or in my opinion, with the pace this guy's got, the dribbling and the finishing touch as well, I actually believe he will be better on the right hand side of your 4-2-3-1. Yeah, I would personally change Adeyemi's position from striker to right wing and have him as an inside forward at the Olympia Stadium. Now again, depending on your play style, and if you stay with a 4-2-3-1 or not, it's up to you what you want to do there. If you want, you can have him as your starting striker. He's good enough to replace Piatek and Jovicic in the first season and be your out-and-out -out number nine. Or if you want, you can play him as a right winger. You can even play him as a CF in this team, uh, as a secondary striker, if you will. But to me, I think personally in this Hertha Berlin team, it'll be better to have him on the right-hand side. He's a left-footed player. He's got tremendous amount of pace and a great great dribble on him as well. So again, the choice is totally yours. As an out and out, out advance forward, if you will, he'd do a great job up top. If you want slightly deeper CF, he'd do a great job. If you want on the right hand side, like we've done, he'd do a great job. Really, the choice is yours where you play Adeyemi. I just make sure regardless of what you plan to do with him, I'd sign him. And uh, one of the final signs I made was this guy right here, uh, Carlos Neva of Granada. If you're watching my La Liga career mode right now, firstly, thank you. Hope you guys are enjoying it. But this guy's a really solid left back in the game. Now he starts off 78 overall so you know in the first season he'll go right into your first 11. You've got three decent left backs here in Middlestadt, Plattenhart and the young Scandinavian as well but ultimately you can get better and you can get someone who's got more potential as well. You might think that at 25 years old he won't grow much at 78 overall but he will. He'll get to 83 potential. Yeah this guy grows five ratings despite the fact he's in his mid-20s. Really really solid player and definitely worth picking up as your new starting left back in this team. Once again, Plattenhart, Middlestadt and the Scandinavian too. They're around the same overall. And whilst uh, mi uh, Pla uh, sorry, Middlestadt grows quite nicely to 78 overall, I would personally say in season one, you don't you don't need three left backs. You're not playing in Europe. You've got a 34 game season. You might as well just sell one of them or sell two of them or swap one of them and bring in a better starting left back like we do with Carlos Neva. So in terms of, uh, well, let's just say unrealistic signings, this is probably the most unrealistic signing I've made in uh, FIFA 22 completely. But as I said at the top of the episode, this series isn't about realism. Um, yeah, you, you might want a young striker for the future. Is there anyone better in the game than this guy in terms of budget strikers? He's like a cheat code, isn't he? Yusufa Mukoko, uh, 16 years old, 70 overall, and his potential, 89. Yeah, we swapped middle stat for him. Quite unrealistic, but you know what? If it works, it works. So yeah, we brought we brought in um, Mukoko for middle stat, a straight swap there. And uh, I think I think the term I would use is fleece. We just fleeced Borussia Dortmund there. They got an okay left back, don't get me wrong, but so uh, we got probably one of the best young strikers in the game. So with her to Berlin, we spent just over a hundred million pounds. Whilst we did lose squad depth, it's not that important in season one. Why is that? Well, very simple indeed. You don't need it. You're not playing in Europe. You've got a 34-game season, and you've only got one cup competition, so that's totally fine. All we needed to do was make our back line stronger, which we did with the size of Masraoui, Schlotterback, and also Neva as well. Bring in some good young talents like we did in the case of Adeyemi and Mukoko too. And that's it. This Hertha Berlin side needs a major, major rebuild. And in season one, it's not about signing one one star player with 65 million and hoping they can grab you a European spot coming in the season. It's a long term project. Season one is all about laying down the groundwork. So as per usual, we'd simulate the end of the season with Hertha Berlin, see how we get on. And as you can see, well, I'll be totally honest here, I was blimmin' nervous <laughs> heading towards the end of this simulation because we did not do very well. 
And in the end, it was a 14th place finish. Uh, yeah, pretty poor in the end. I'll be totally honest here. Only four points clear of 16th place Firth, which is where Hertha finished uh, last season in real life. Leverkusen won the title, interestingly enough, this year. But to be fair, we did better than Hertha Berlin did in real life. We avoided having to play a relegation playoff. And if you look at the lead table, because of how congested it was, it was as well, we're only actually four points off Armenia Bielfeld in, I think it was 11th place. So, I mean, you know, really, it's 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 okay. You know, it's, it's a very congested table in season one. And whilst it was reasonably disappointing, it wasn't disastrous. We didn't go down and I was a little bit fearful we were going to finish in 16th place and have relegation playoff. We avoided that. Maybe only by four points. We avoided it regardless. When you look at the cup as well, uh, we were knocked out in the second round, last 32 by Borussia Dortmund. So my manager rating was justifiably very low because we failed both of our objectives. So you could say it was a disappointing season one on the pitch. But I wouldn't say it was a disappointing season one off the pitch. And why is that? Well, we reduced the squad size here. We certainly got rid of quite a lot of the Deadwood players here. We made our side much better for the future and a lot younger as well. And look at the way our signings progressed in season one. Carlos Neva grew three ratings to 81 overall. So like I said earlier, don't be put off by the fact this guy's 25 years old. He still grows five ratings to 83 at his potential. Schlotterback grew three ratings to 83 overall. Once again, this guy's one of the best young German center arts you can get in the game. Definitely pick him up. Masraoui grew three ratings to 85 overall and got that low defensive work rate up from uh, low to high. And as you'll see, the whole team really showed much better progression in season one because we sold those aging players like Bakaric, for example, and brought in younger players that have more potential. So it's a it's a much more youthful Hertha Berlin team, and that's the key. With the current squad they've got, you can't really progress much with it. You have to make sure you sell those players that are what you call deadwood players, don't offer much for you, and bring in those young talents like Adeyemi, who grew five ratings to 80 overall, as you know, inside forward. Mukoko up top as well. Yeah, it's all about getting rid of those players like Boateng for example and bringing in those young talents as well it's probably the best team in the top five European leagues for a rebuild they've got great kits they've got a real iconic stadium it's a great team to use and I thoroughly recommend it for a really good long-term RTG rebuild project had a lot of fun with this Hertha Berlin career mode in the first season I definitely recommend it give these guys a go thanks for watching though guys hope you enjoyed the episode if you have a beautiful like much love to you all have a fantastic day and I'll see for an exercise of who to sign for very soon.